What's up, guys? I'm Zach Siri, and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about Rails, Docker, and Redis. So, in the previous couple of episodes, we covered how to get our Rails app, the MovieDB app, uh, connected to the Postgres service and the Elasticsearch service so that you know they're talking to these services and we can create indexes and we can add stuff to our database and all that stuff. And all of our services are running in Docker containers. Today, we're going to be covering another service, and that is Redis. So why do we need Redis? Well, Redis serves as the backend, the in-memory storage for things like Sidekick, or you, know, you can use it to cache stuff you know, because it's in memory. So it comes in handy in a lot of cases. And a lot of Rails app I actually work with use Redis. So in this episode right here, I'm going to be showing you guys how to, um, you know, if you're working with Docker and you're deploying your Rails app and with Docker into your infrastructure, how you can do that. Let's hop right into code. So over here, I've got um, my sidekick.rb file, which is, um, you know, going to configure sidekick to play nicely uh, with Redis. So essentially, uh, what we have here is we're taking the environment variable, uh, for, so for the rest of Redis host, and for Redis port. And then um, here we have, you know, this is very similar to what we had in the previous episode where we're checking if all the parameters that we have are ready, like if they're present, then we use the custom Redis URL. And if it's not present, then we use the default one in development and in test. So then we also pass uh, it into, um, you know, this Redis object over here. Uh, so we pass this URL into the Redis object and we pass a Redis object into Redis namespace. So in the previous episode, I mentioned that we added, um, you know, in our gem file over here, uh, we added Redis namespace to our gem file. And that's why we did that is so that we can use it over here. All right, so here, uh, then once I have all that proc configured, uh, what I'm doing is um, I'm calling the Redis connection over here. Uh, and so this is, you know, I'm just using a connection pool so that, you know, can the one connection can be shared. Um, you know, it's, it's gonna create a pool of connections and the Redis client and the server is gonna pick from that pool so that, you know, we don't have, um, you know, a bloat of connections. So that's gonna work. And uh, so we have one configured for the client and one configured for the server for consistency. So we know we're using the same Redis settings for both the server and the client. Uh, and the next thing we're gonna talk about is uh, the worker file over here. So over here, uh, you know, in the previous episode, I mentioned that we created a bin file, um, you know, for the web process. And here we have the same thing for the worker process. So um, if we take a look, all we're doing here is we're just starting the sidekick process. So you would use the same command in development, like from your terminal, uh, if you were doing this in, in your, uh, you know, in your terminal. So um, then I have this config sidekick.yaml, uh, very simple. Over here, we have all the settings. So setting concurrency to four. And the worker is going to look at the default queue and the Elasticsearch queue. Now I haven't added you know, these settings uh, into our image. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rebuild our container. Uh, so I'm gonna do Docker, actually git status. Let me add this to the commit. Commit added setting for sidekick. That'll work, push. So this is all gonna go in that pull request um, that I mentioned in the previous episode. I'm gonna link it down below in the description as well. Um, and so, yeah, so now I'm going to actually do Docker PS. Uh, so, okay, okay, I don't have Docker connected in this one. So Docker PS, this one works. So as you can see, I already have Elasticsearch, the MovieDB web and the Postgres service running. Um, you know, we're gonna start up the Redis service as well. And uh, so before we do that, let's actually build the container. So Docker build T MovieDB dot, whoops. There we go. So this is going to build a container. In the meantime, let's go ahead and start our um, and start our Redis container uh, service as well. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up the Redis container. So Docker uh, D, and then we're going to name it Redis, so that way we can link to it using the name Redis. And then uh, we're going to do Redis. 
whoops, we need to do docker run over here. Docker PS. And there we go. Doc, uh, Redis is now running and waiting on port 6379. So the next thing we have to do is basically, um, you know, we're going to have two processes running for our, for our application now. We're going to have the web process, which is, you know, we can interact with the web UI through the browser. And then we're going to have the background worker starting as well. And that's going to basically be just the worker process that's going to do whatever you know it is that it needs to do, like uh, index, putting stuff into the Elasticsearch index. We're going to try and create a uh, object in the database so that it indexes it into Elasticsearch asynchronously. That's how we have it set up in our app. So um, yeah, so let's take a look at the build process. Uh, it's still installing over here. All right, so it built successfully, as you can see here. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop the current container. We're going to delete it. And then we're going to reboot this container, uh, you know, the web container and the worker container. And then we're going to take a look at what we're going to do from there. So we have Redis. All the services is up. Um, all we need to do is stop the Docker stop movie DB web one. And then we're going to, you know, shut it down. Um, and then we're going to boot it up again. We're going to delete the old container. And we're going to boot it up again with the new image that we just built over there. So docker rm movie db web one. So let's see, we have uh, everything running smoothly over here. So let's look at Kitematic, uh, three services, great. Um, so as you can see, Redis is running over here. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start up the new container we just built, so docker images, uh, as you can see here, about a minute ago. So this is the one that was built. So docker run d env file. Actually, let me go into the directory of the application. So docker run d env file equals dot env dot prod. So uh, just a quick recap, uh, what we have over here in the env dot prod is all the environment variables that we need in order to get our app to boot. So Redis config is right over here. So remember, we're going to use linking to link between all these services. So we, we have to remember to do that. Uh, so here we are going to link uh, Postgres to Postgres, link Elasticsearch, Elasticsearch, and then link uh, Redis to Redis. And we're going to use the movie DB image. Actually, we're going to name it first. So, so movie DB web one. And then the next one is going to be the actual um, name of the image. And then now we're going to put in sh bin web. I'm going to hit enter and what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at Kitematic and we're going to see uh, the app actually booting up. Uh, so, you know, we forgot to uh, map the port. Uh, so let's let's uh, docker stop movie db web one. So you see there's actually a problem like we have to remember a lot of commands when we're running um, you know, using Docker run command line. In the upcoming episodes, I can give you guys a hint. Uh, and what we're going to be covering is we're going to be covering what we call Docker Compose. So you wouldn't have to actually, you know, write in all these options, like these long options, and then you forget, you know. Um, it'll all be put in one file so that when you want to run, you just use one simple command and you don't have to remember, oh, did I link that container to the other one? Did I map the port and all that? You don't have to worry about all that. But it's important, and someone made a comment in the pull request, was that why didn't you use Docker Compose? It's important to know these commands as well because, you know, not in all environments that you're going to have access to Docker Compose. Um, sometimes you just want to quickly run up a command, like boot up a container, like on the spot. You don't want to have to write a Docker Compose file for that. So it's good to know these commands. But it's also, you know, there's also a need to have like a file based um, where you can actually store all your settings. Uh, and we're going to cover that in the upcoming episode. So subscribe and don't forget to check that out. So um, I've stopped the movie DB. So I'm going to do Docker RM movie DB web one. And what we're going to do is it's going to go back up and then we're going to um, put the P uh, option 4000 here just like that. Uh, and this is going to boot up our container. All right, here we are. So here it is, it's booting back up. Um, so we can test, so I'm gonna copy this. 
So as you can see, it's working. The web process is working. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna do the same thing, but for the worker process. So we can use the same command and we don't need to map anything to port 4000 because the worker process doesn't need to be accessed by the browser or any external services. Um, it's just a self-contained process that just process stuff. So that, um, okay, we need to change the name. So here we are, we can actually use the worker name over here. Um, and we're gonna boot that up, docker ps. So there we go. Um, everything is booted up and uh, let's test this out. So as you can see here, Sidekick is actually now starting and connecting because as you can see here, there's no warning or errors about Redis and everything is running smoothly and uh, our web worker is running, our worker process is uh, you know, running, everything is working. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a movie in our application in our like an objects for it to index and you'll see you know um you know as we're creating the object through the console um where it's going to run the worker process so docker exec it uh, movie um and then we're gonna run uh, bundle exec rail c so i think in the previous episode we already have set up the database um, so I'm just gonna create a movie. Uh, I'm gonna look into the source code to see, uh, you know, if there's any validations I need to satisfy. Um, so yeah, uh, we just need to validate the name. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so we're just gonna create a movie. Movie equals movie uh, dot create name. Let's call it X Men Apocalypse. Very good movie, by the way. You guys should check it out. The X-Men. All right, I'm gonna create that. So as you can see, it's enqueued the, um, the object to be indexed. So if you check out the log over here, as you can see over here, it's done the indexing, it's processed the job and everything is working. Um, so we have the web process. So if we do a search for X-Men, um, that works. It's found the movie we just added. Um, and so the worker background worker process is also working. Everything is set up. Um, so this is a moderately complicated Rails application. You know, it has a few dependencies. It has Redis and Elasticsearch and Postgres. So in the previous episodes, uh, including this one, we managed to wire everything up. We built the container and we got it all boot up uh, on our application, on, on our machine over here. And so in the next episodes, we're gonna cover Docker Compose. And then uh, eventually, once we're done with all that, we understand Docker Compose, we're going to move um, everything that we've done here over into the cloud. Um, you know, how do you set up uh, an infrastructure? So you have some machines running on AWS, on Linode or DigitalOcean or whatever. Um, how do you actually, um, you know, use those machines to deploy a Docker application just like this one? Uh, stay tuned and uh, it's coming. And uh, I also like to mention that in the description area below, I have added links, referral links for DigitalOcean and Linode. So, you know, if you guys want some free credits for that, don't forget to check the links in the description below. And with that, I'm going to wrap it up for this episode. I will see you guys in the next one.